Good morning. It's very noisy in my kitchen. So I've been really enjoying starting the day with this whole earth, what is it? Whole earth coffee alternative. It's just very nice and just warm and snuggly. And I feel like I need it when it's chilly outside. So I'm gonna start with this. Good morning guys and welcome back to another video. I wanna show you another full day of low calorie density, whole food, plant-based, healthy vegan eating. This is the way that I have eaten to lose 60 pounds and the way I still eat now to maintain my weight loss and to attempt to build some muscle. So um, if you wanna see what I eat today, um, whole food style, then, you know, I guess keep on watching. Feel free to also, I never say this, but if you like seeing my videos, you can subscribe. If you fancy it, totally up to you. Anyway, we're gonna start the day with some more recipe testing for my vegan weight loss Indian cookbook. Um, and this morning, I'm feeling in a sweet mood, so we're gonna go for like a mung dal porridge. If you've never had porridge or oatmeal uh, made out of lentils, it is incredible and I highly recommend it. Extra protein, extra fiber, so much goodness. Um, or, you know, you can mix it with your oats, however you fancy doing it, but I'm gonna show you how I do it mung dal style. Um, and obviously I'm gonna keep the flavors Indian because I just love them so much. And obviously I'm writing an Indian cookbook, but you can obviously mix up the flavors. You can make it chocolatey, make it, actually that sounds really good too. Oh man. Um, anyway, mix up the flavors is my point. We're gonna start by roasting up some mung dal to really give it, give it a lovely um, a lovely flavor because it changes the game. So I also like to share with you general, just weight loss tips and things that have worked for me along the way, habits that I've built up and habits that I um, am still building. So I have the recipe for this in my book and it calls for one cup of mung dal. However, I know that I don't need a full cup right now. That's kind of more for a few people um, or for a couple of people. So I was gonna make a full batch and I was like, I was realized to myself that if I made a full batch, I will certainly eat a full batch because it's delicious, it's yummy, it'll be right in front of me. I'm not gonna be able to say no to it. So instead, I'm gonna be smart and I'm gonna make myself a half batch because that is probably the right amount for me to eat. Okie dokie, half a cup of more dal. And then we're gonna lightly toast this. Okay, we want it to be fragrant and nice and brown. For those of you who saw my interview with Jeremy from uh, Plant Based with Jeremy, PB with J yesterday, um, thank you so much for watching it and for checking it out. It was such a fun chat. He's such a lovely guy. Um, and yeah, it's a shame that we live across the world because it'd be so fun to get into a kitchen with him and just like have some fun and just make some really fun creative things. Um, so yeah, that was a really fun interview last night. And I really enjoyed it. But yeah, if you haven't checked it out, then feel free to. He's also just got a great channel in general. Um, so yeah, with loads of good whole foodsy fun stuff. He said he's going to be making some ice cream with aquafaba. That blown my mind and I need to try that immediately. I've never been able to do aquafaba right. Like I've never had one of those hand held mixers, which is what you need. I've put it in a blender before, but it's not the same. So you need to like fluff up, but I need to buy one of those because aquafaba ice cream would be incredible, wouldn't it? I thought that would be amazing. Okay, anyway, so for this recipe, I'm also gonna want some date paste. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and make myself some date paste. I was thinking it'd be a good thing just to have date paste in general. I used to make a massive batch of date paste at the beginning of every week and just use it in the kids' porridge and just generally for sweetening things. But I've kind of gotten out of the habit of that. So I'm gonna make a big batch because um, it'd be good to have a bit more date paste in our lives. So dates are obviously a fantastic way to sweeten your meals, whole foods, you've got all of the all of the intact goodness in there. So for date paste, it's really quite simple to be honest. I'm just going to add uh, well, these like gigantic medjols, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm gonna do 10 medjol dates in a blender with some water, boom, date paste. You can obviously make it as thick or as thin as you like. And also what I usually liked to do um, in the past when I would do date paste is I would also put in um, some beans in there as well. So some cannellini beans or even some chickpeas or butter beans or whatever kind of bean, um, just to find another way of getting beans into your life. You guys know I love and get crazy about beans. Um, they're just fantastic for keeping you full and satisfied, all those good things. But yeah, squeeze them into date paste. And there you go, some gorgeous date paste. Obviously this is kind of like, you know, nature's caramel. So you can also dunk apples in it and dunk all sorts of stuff in it. Just brilliant for general use really. Okay, so this recipe calls for a cup of plant milk. Now, because I don't want to waste the date paste at the bottom of the blender, so hard to get everything out of this baby, um, I'm just going to add the milk here and just blend it up real quick. So when it comes to our mung dal, 
this is really what we're after. We're after that kind of golden brown. It smells amazing as well. And that's, uh, that's how you know it's ready. So we're wanting to turn this into a fine powder now. So I'm just gonna whack it in the blender and um, turn it on and then add it into our, into our lovely milk. Oh my gosh, Whew. that is intense. Okie dokie. Add in a quarter cup of date paste to sweeten this bad boy. And then we're just gonna put it back on the hob and let it cook and let it really thicken up nicely. It's gonna turn into like some kind of thick porridgey fudge. You can adjust the milk ratios to kind of, you know, suit your preferences. So if you want it more uh, squidgy or more solid, feel free to go for it. So I just wanted to chat about something real quick, which is this like lower part of your tummy. Like this is one of the things that I used to be really self-conscious about. Um, it's one of these things that if, if I thought I lost weight, I would have a flat, flat tummy, like just totally flat, no bumps or anything. And over the course of time, I've realized that um, you have to be extremely, extremely lean in order to get rid of that. Um, and also it's totally unnecessary to get rid of it and to see it as an issue in and of itself is just ridiculous because it's just a little bit of your body. What I think over the course of time, my weight loss has changed from wanting to look a certain way. And as time has gone on, it's really not about that anymore. Um, obviously, I, you know, I don't want to be massively overweight, but mainly because it's not a healthy way to be and because it feels uncomfortable. So I'm fully comfortable. I didn't have any energy. I've got loads of energy. You know, I, I feel incredible compared to how I used to, and I'm not going to let a little bit of my tummy make me feel like I'm not making progress or that I'm not healthy, all that kind of stuff. So if you also have a little bit of tummy bump, don't worry about it, it's totally natural and just get okay with it. And instead of trying to look perfect all the time, which is not even a thing, um, just focus on being your health, your like healthiest self and get fit and get strong and really focus on those, making those your priority. Um, you know, people who've had a couple of kids, you're always gonna have, I've got a you know, wibbly tummy, I've got loads of stretch marks and stuff, like that's okay. Um, people don't show you that a lot of the time on social media. They just kind of, you know, <laughs> suck in their tummies and like, that's it. But um, that's not realistic. So I'm, on this channel, I really wanna show you guys what realistic weight loss looks like. And for someone who, you know, I, I, I do feel like pretty lean and like, you know, compared to how I used to, but I still have that tummy bump, but that's okay. Um, let me know down below if, you know, if that used to be an issue for you as well. I always used to hate that tummy bump and now I'm, I'm starting to get, I'm starting to get okay with it. And I realized, you know, it's just, um, it doesn't matter. I mean, who the heck cares if you've got a bit of tummy bump, you know? Anyway, that might not be, um, relevant to everybody on here, but for the people who do need to hear it, it's okay. It's not the end of the world to have a tummy bump. And sometimes no matter how lean you get, it'll still be there, you know? Okay, you see how we're cooking this down? It's getting really nice and thick. Oh my God, it smells amazing. This is like a luxurious, like fudge. I might end up doing this chocolatey style actually. I mainly wanted to test the recipe just to make sure the ratios were good in terms of the milk and stuff, which I think it definitely is. Um, but we could just go chocolate. Let's like, let's fluff the Indian flavors, shall we? Let's have a chocolate pudding. Okay, so yes, we are straying from the path and we are going in with some cocoa powder. You could totally turn this, by the way, into like little date balls. If you let it cool down, roll it into little chalky balls. That would be very yummy. Let's have a little taste. Mm. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Super, super, super good. Mung dal is so versatile, I love it. Okay, now I need to figure out how to plate this up. Low calorie density style, because as you can see, there's not like a ton of volume in here. It's kind of like more of a condensed thing. Like I said, you could add more milk and like make it bigger. This is like a more of a condensed kind of dippable thing. Um, but it just means when it doesn't have a lot of liquid, it's not massively low in calorie density compared to like, you know, fruits, veggies, or soups or something. So I'm gonna go hunting and see what I can pair with this. I'm thinking just a ton of fruit for dipping and kind of just treat it like a chocolate pudding. Okay, so I'm addicted to grapes at the moment. They're just incredible. So I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna eat the whole thing. Um, these are the cotton candy grapes I got yesterday. Oh my God, they're good. Kind of gonna go in with an apple. 
Okay, so I added an orange on for good measure. So this is looking like such a really good amount of food now. And as a volume eater, I need a lot of food to be satisfied. And the way I do that to get and stay lean, or the way I did that um, and still do that, is by using fruits and veggies to my advantage and just like going hard on those because they are so low in calorie density. Obviously having your starches as well. I have decided, by the way, to turn this into little balls because it's the perfect consistency now. And also just... How cute does that look? So I'm gonna have a bunch of these chalky balls with my fruit. I love that. I never really know what I'm gonna make until I get into the kitchen, which is why it's really hard for me to make recipe videos, specifically recipe videos, because I'm not 100% sure what I'm making whilst I'm making it. It's only after the fact. I'm like, oh yeah, that's what I made. Um, so that's why the what I eat in today is so much easier to make. But yeah, there we go, breakfast is served. I hope you can see the volume difference. If I'd just had that, that would have been tiny compared to this gigantic, gigantic feast. Um, anyway, I'm gonna go do some work because my babies are at school and, um, and I'll let you know when I do some more, some more eating of some kind. I don't know how that's happened. The time has literally flown. Four hours feels like 20 minutes. I tell you what, I never really knew how much work goes into writing an ebook. I mean, ebook seems like such a small thing. Well, I used to think it was to like, just quickly throw together, write some recipes down. Honestly, it's so involved. I've edited this thing like five million times. I've just spent the morning like defining different spices and different beans and stuff. And obviously it needs to be, needs to be right. But anyway, there was a lot of work that went into that. Um, but yeah, I, I've, I'm coming to the realization that writing an ebook is a journey. It's something they have to go through. Yeah, I'm just gonna go and collect Rami from nursery, head back. I'm actually not hungry in the slightest, it's like one o'clock. But um, those little balls were so filling. Um, again, it's the, it's the legume element that I think really works here in terms of keeping me full and satisfied. Um, so I'll have some lunch at some point. No idea what we'll have, but uh, we'll figure it out together, won't we? Anyway, let's go get that baby girl. So I've now picked up Romy and it's been a few hours she's gonna sleep on me on the couch and I've been trapped on the couch because she was just so so tired she wouldn't let me put her down anyway it's like three o'clock I'm now gonna pick Abe up and I haven't had any food um so I quickly grabbed an apple to eat on the way and then when we get home we need to figure out some lunch because I'm hungry and I was thinking crispy air fried leftover pasta that sounds quite tasty with like maybe like a creamy tofu dip. Let's see. Okay, we're back at home now. Rami, you're stealing me niblets. Okay, you can have another piece, there you go. I've just, it's four o'clock. I've decided to make a very quick little snack before dinner. So I've got some pasta in the fridge. And like I said before, I really want to do some crispy air fried pasta because I saw it somewhere. Abe, can you imagine crispy air fried pasta? Doesn't that sound amazing? And it got, it's got really good crunch. Yes, good, I know. I know. <laughs> I know it sounds so good. Um, and I was gonna do like a little tofu dip to like dunk it in. But anyway, I've gotta try it. I've gotta try it because it's a great way to use up pasta if you're kind of bored of having pasta. So anyway, let's give it a whirl. I'm gonna film it over for Instagram, but I'm gonna do nooch, garlic salt, onion powder, spun paprika. That's it, we're keeping it simple. Rami, don't eat all my pasta, you laughing. One more, there you go. Um, and then I'll let you know what the no, final result is no, like. No, no. What? Not for me. Ham! Yeah. Well, 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 you eat it, you sausage. I'm putting in about a quarter of this block of tofu. Oh my gosh, it is a madhouse this evening. Anyway, I'm just gonna kind of whip up like a kind of maybe ranchy style thing. So I've got some dill in here. I'm gonna go in with some garlic salt. A little bit of lemon juice. A little splash of mustard and some soya milk. Right, lift it up. Okay, dokie, there you go, a nice creamy ranch. Yum. Yes, Rami. Oh, yeah. This is a pasta revolution. I invite you to, I wish you could join me in my house to experience this pasta with goodness. But if you have pasta at home, you can make it right now. But basically, this is, I want you to listen to this crunch real quick. Listen to this. Can you hear that? This is the most delicious little snack. I did not think it was gonna get 
quite so crunchy. The crunch level is 20,000 out of 10. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. If you've never air fried your pasta. I mean, why would you think to air fry pasta? But, mm, oh my gosh. This is my absolute new favorite snack. And the ranch is just delicious. Okay, anyway, um, I'm gonna... I'm going to try and calm down about the pasta, but obviously it's worth mentioning this is not a super low calorie density item. It's obviously fat free and you can include it in your diet, but if you were to munch on this all day, that's not going to necessarily help you in your weight loss journey, but you can definitely include it. If I was going to have this as a meal or even a snack, I would pair it with loads of, which I'm going to do now, having said that out loud, loads of fresh stuff. So I'm going to go and get myself a ton of cucumber, make a big cucumber salad, and drizzle this all over the top of my cucumber. Um, let's do it. I okay. want that. You'd like some. So Abe is in love with the pasta and the sauce. He says Mom. it's incredible. Super good. Cucumber. I'm just gonna slice it up. Mama. Yes, Romy, you can have some too, babes. Just to the bowl. You'd like to dip it. Here you go, tiny. What do you think? Would you, like some, would you like some more dip? Look, look, mummy's about to cover this whole cucumber in the special dip. So we're going to smother our cucumber in our dip, in our delightful dip. It's so good, I've decided to chop up the entire rest of the cucumber and whack it in. If you're looking for a high protein, low calorie density snack to munch on in between meals, this one is a winner, I promise you. Yes, yes, yes. Abe and Robbie have both gone crazy for it as well, just so you know. That's always a Marco a good recipe. Anyway, okay, I am getting crazy. I'm going to add some of these little pickles in. I know it's cucumber on cucumber, but um, I'm okay with that. They are. Pop the pickles in. Look at the volume going on here. I'm going to do a splash of pickle juice just to give it a nice little, you know, nice vibe. There we go. Thank you. Now you're talking. Quarter past five and dinner's going to be a strange mishmash of Let things. Well, kind of. Basically, I've got some brown rice. No, don't eat it like that. Give it here. Give it here. Eat this leafy instead. So. I've got some brown rice, I'm going to heat this up, Abe's going to have a sushi bowl and Romy and I are going to turn it into a lovely pineapple stir fry because I thought that sounded just delicious. Um, so anyways, that's what, I thought, so, that, blah, blah, blah. so that's what the plan is. I've got broccoli, I've got courgette and I've got some mushrooms. I would put carrots in, but you know, orange hands and all. Um, and then some, then some pineapple. I'm keeping it pretty simple and I uh, might add some spinach at the end or something. Let's see. So Abe is doing his own little sushi bowl, chopping up all his stuff. Oh God. I always try and get the kids involved in making food so they learn how to make food for later in life, you know. Abe, that's beautiful, sweet pea. This is the bowl that Abe made himself, well, painted himself. Do you want to pop it all in there, sweet pea? For my stir fry, I'm slicing up everything super tiny and I'll show you in a second. So I've got all my veggies in here and I did half the cabbage as well and the frozen pineapple, which is so deliciously sweet. Um, and then here I've grated up a full, well, almost a full, full block of super firm tofu. And I just put some soy sauce and a little bit of um, sushi seasoning in there just to give it like a little bit of a sweet touch. And then I'm gonna add that on. It's kind of like crumbles on top of the stir fry. That's kind of my thoughts. Um, I haven't got loads and loads of rice. So that's why I've gone veggie and tofu um, heavy. But Abe has got his sushi and he's made it all, all totally by himself, which I'm so proud of. Um, but I was just thinking, having obviously rice is fantastic, like prepped ahead of time. Just because then you can turn it into anything, turn it into a stir fry, turn it into sushi. And then um, it's just super customizable at some point. Okie dokie, so I've got a massive, a massive amount of pineapple stir fry here. So on my stir fry, I'm going to add a little bit of sushi seasoning to give it a vinegary and a little bit of a sweet touch as well. I'm going to mix that in. So in here, I'm going to do a little bit of coriander. I've got my super crispy tofu crumbles 
which turned out so, so, so good. That's just gonna go on the top here. Oh wow, oh my gosh, this is good. This is good, guys, this is so good. And then obviously finished off with some sesame seeds as well. There we go, dinner is served. Here we go. I already know it's good because I've been nibbling at it. Very yummy, so many veggies packed in here. Mm. I do. A little squeeze of lemon juice at the end as well. Anyway, I'm gonna go and enjoy this. Get these babies in the bath. And that'll be it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. So I am back because I've realized that I'm still hungry. It was quite a light dinner, although it was quite large. There wasn't really loads of rice to go around. So therefore I'm gonna make myself a little sweet snacky treat thing. It's eight o'clock, it's not ideal, but if you're hungry, you gotta eat, am I right? So I'm going in. I basically, I've been having this vision all day long, which is, peanut butter powder and yogurt with a ton of frozen blueberries. And that just sounds so special. So let's do it. You'd like some blueberries. So we've got a couple of tablespoons in there. And heck, I think we should just put the blueberries straight in the jar. Oh, yum. Okay, then load it up with a ton of blueberries. I'm just gonna crush it and give it a nice mix. Rami's dying for some blueberries. So we're gonna go and share Roms, aren't we, babes? And there you go. Quick and easy little snack. I know it doesn't look super sexy, but it's gonna be very tasty. Yes, I'll give you some blueberries, you little muffin. The thing I love about this is that the frozen blueberries turns it all into like ice, and so it's kind of like a, a frozen ice cream, like a froyo. Yum. Okay. That's all the food now, I promise.